In today's latest news, we talk Hudson Odoi. What does the future hold for Callum, knowing that his current season at Leverkusen isn't quite going to plan? To move on, we have big updates on Gonzalo Ramos, we talk Vitor Roque, and we have a very interesting report around Malo Gusto. Right now, we have a ton of things to break down, my friends. I hope you guys enjoy. And before I get into anything, I want to quickly say thank you to everyone for very supportive comments and kind words. Like, it's very motivating when people are taking the time out of their day to watch your content and actually enjoying it as well too. You guys know that I like to try and put some pride behind my work. So I've always done things and it's even more motivating knowing that you guys are loving things right now because I want to keep doing bigger and better things as the season continues. So if you guys like today's video, you know where that like button is. And without wasting any more time, so right now, let's start things off and let's talk Malo Gusto. At this point in time, Gusto is currently carrying a hamstring injury, but because he is our player, because we have signed him from Leon already, he has come back to his parent club to continue his rehabilitation and of course, continue to get monitored as well too. The funny thing is though, <laughs> Leon are completely out of the loop right now. And they're very frustrated by the fact that they have no time scale for when Gusto can return back to them. And the mad thing is, is that he has not been in Leon now for nearly one month. Back when Gusto returned back to us, Leon were of the belief that this was like a minor type of discomfort and hamstring injury. But suddenly, we see it as something a little bit different. Obviously, this is a lot more serious compared to what Leon originally realized. And due to this seriousness, Gusto has to remain here to continue to get monitored and looked at. <laughs> like this game is, it's a ruthless game here. Yeah. This game is not for kids. Leon can't do anything about this because they don't own the player. He is our player. So technically we can take as much time as humanly possible in keeping Gusto here. Now reports in France are saying that we are keeping communication at like bare minimum levels. I'm sure at some point when Gusto is like 110% fit or maybe 150% fit then I'll go back to Lyon for the final few games but right now it makes sense for him to be here to get used to the club his teammates used to you know being around Cobham as well too you know getting more familiar with himself in the city and settling down this is like a really good opportunity for things like this to happen he was spotted of course after that 2-0 win against Dortmund a few days ago so it's looking quite obvious what our strategy is at this point in time but you know what I don't really care because when we tried to sign him. We wanted to sign him for this window so he comes now, but Leon said no, you get him once the season ends. So, <laughs> Leon must have been fuming when Gusto picked up that small knock here because it's gonna be a long time since they see him again. So that's the first story out of the way. Let's now move on to the second one and let's talk the latest news around Gonzalo Ramos. Now, this report comes courtesy of Fabrizio Romano on his YouTube channel and I'm going to recommend that you guys watch my previous video that I did on this story because there was a lot of insight behind, you know, why we're trying to sign them and some of the transfer talks happening behind the scenes because we brought up interest as we were currently negotiating for Enzo Fernandez with Benfica. So I suggest that you guys watch that to get a better idea behind who Gonzalo Ramos is. Now, since that video I've made, Ramos has scored four more goals and recorded one more assist. And currently his total for this season is 23 goals nine assists and 34 appearances. He has the attention of major clubs across Europe. As Fabrice Romano says, uh, Luis Campos at Paris Saint-Germain sees Ramos as like a really big four to try and sign. He loves his work rate, what he does for the team and his goal scoring as well too. Uh, naturally, Man United too have been heavily scouring the sky for a long time and we are paying great attention at Gonzalo Ramos. Now, I find Ramos a very interesting player and character. Uh, in terms of his personality, he's quite similar to your Badia Shields and Engordo Cantes, you know, introverts who keep things low key, but once they step on the field, you see a completely different energy, different focus, and different desire. Personally, I've always loved these types of characters, and I think it suits Ramos even more because when I see this guy, he is someone that gets better every single season. Now, last season, for example, you know, he had half the goals and assists that he has right now. But that was because he was playing as like a support striker, as an attacking mid. So he had other duties for the team outside of playing as like an exclusive striker. It's only this season now that he's playing as an exclusive striker and you're seeing what he can do in multiple phases of the game. You can see the education that he's built over the past few seasons and how that's made him a more complete football player. I mean, the guy is good aerially, 
good on the ground, can link up, can run in behind. You know, very uh, intelligent with his positions and very selfless as well too. Like he's not only someone that can interchange positions, but you know, he isn't selfish. He will play that pass for his teammates. And I think the most exciting thing about him is that he can grow even more. He has even more potential. And you know, personally, I've been saying this in my videos for a long time now, but when we go for a forward, he has to do more than just score. Like we can't accommodate like a pure goal scorer. Like we need someone that can produce assists, that can help us in the press uh, off the board as well too. You know, that can link up the play, that can play intelligently with the new attacking players we're going to have for next season. Now the stumbling block is though, is that he has a 120 million release clause. But the difference between the release clause for Enzo and for Ramos is the fact that we had to pay peak price, premium price, to sign Enzo in the January window. We could have signed him for less money, around 88 something million. That's what Rui Costa even offered us, but we said no. So you could hope to sign Ramos for even less money, but the only issue behind that is that with greater competition right now, I'm sure Benfica can smell like there's going to be a bidding war like crazy in this next summer window. But, uh, you know, in terms of like top forwards that fit the profile I think we need, there aren't too many of them, but I do think on Charlo Ramos, you know, at his age, he can grow even more. He's an international player. He's leading the line uh, for Benfica right now. He's doing so well in the Champions League. Three goals and three assists. And I think this guy could be a very smart acquisition and a smart player if we sign, knowing that he has even more room for potential. So right now, let's move on to the next story. So right now, I think it's time we discuss Callum hudson Adoy. And the reason why I'm even doing this is because earlier today, there was a big article that was released from Sky Sports Germany. And in the article, it gives you a bit of insight and a breakdown behind how his current loan spell is doing at Bayer Leverkusen. And it's not like hudson Doy is acting up behind the scenes or isn't training hard enough or is being unprofessional. It's none of those things. It seems like the reason why Bayer Leverkusen won't be looking to sign him at the end of this loan spell or even extend the loan spell is that they see him as a very harmless player. And I've got some thoughts and opinions behind this that I've kind of been thinking about for a while now but obviously his current loan spell of the season is giving me like more definitive views but again I'm going to hold my hands up these will be like subjective opinions for sure so let's actually get involved in this conversation but regardless you know the past three games now and even tonight this is four games in a row hudson Adoy hasn't played at all not even coming off the bench he's not even part of the match day squads with their game against uh for a in the Europa League, basically. With guys like Florian Wirtz returning back, with guys like Sadar Asmo, who's found himself back in contention at Bayer Leverkusen. Right now, there is no needs or no support for hudson Adoy, And this is kind of worrying because we felt like this would be the line spell for Callum that would really give him some of that energy back, that confidence back in his game and help him try and reclaim and rediscover some of that potential that this guy had in abundance when he was first making his name as a teenager. This season he has one goal and one assist and now that we've signed guys like Mudrik, now that Nkunku's coming here, now that we're hoping to sign Joao Felix on a permanent deal, is there really any place left now for hudson Adoy? I mean even if he did stay he'd be like one of the lowest squad status players in the squad right now and that's doing nothing for his career so I guess now I want to give some thoughts and opinions and as I said earlier this is my subjective take it's not a fact or anything, it's just my personal opinion, so don't hold me to it too strong, but it's weird because when I see hudson Adoy play, it's not like he does things wrong. It's not like he's getting dispossessed or playing sloppy passes or, you know, having bad touches and controls and just like th th those types of basics, right? For me, the thing that I've been seeing from Callum at Leverkusen and even before during us is the fact that he doesn't affect the game at all now. And when Leverkusen are saying words like harmless, I think that's the most reflective words of how his current loan spell is going. And for me, I kind of feel like this must be a psychological thing now. Because, I mean, you're seeing the FB ref stats. I mean, look at the chance creation. I mean, it's non-existent. Like, in terms of passing is there, he plays the obvious pass, the safe pass. But he doesn't influence the game. You know, he's not running in behind. He's not getting into goal-scoring situations. He's passing responsibility on to his teammates every single time. And I think this has been something that a lot of us have been seeing in his game now since before this Lawrence Ball at Leverkusen. And I can't help but think, but is this like a psychological thing where it's like he doesn't want to overcommit to get fouled? Obviously, since he ruptured his ACL, 
he had to come back and adapt his game again. Like before, Hudson Odoi kind of reminded me of like a Vinicius Jr. Like he was explosive in the first few meters. He was brave, he was taking his men on. I remember his game for the England under 17s when guys like Foden and Mount and many other big names were in that same squad with him. And I felt that Hudson Odoi was by far the best player. Since his debuts under Conte and Sari, he just isn't the same guy anymore. And a part of me feels like, is he too nervous to want to ride any tackles or challenges thinking that he might pick up another injury is this like a psychological thing where it's like really affected like the nature of what his game used to be because he is just like existing in games without really doing anything and and with how difficult Leverkusen season's been they can't afford to carry players that aren't really doing anything to help turn their efforts into wins i understand that after that injury you know it was reported that hudson Odoi had to adapt his game he had to adapt how he ran with the ball, how he dribbled, you know, key facets like this. My thing is, is that does he need more time to build more confidence to play this new way or have the injuries taken something away from him? Something psychological at this point in time where maybe there's a bit of fear, worry, he's in his head too much. I'm not too sure what it is, but you know, he does everything safe and doesn't affect the game anymore. Now, I'm not going to completely put the blame on him. You know, could he have done a bit better in terms of how he came back into the team? Uh, for example, when you're playing outside your best position, how does that help you regain that confidence to take your men on and play your natural game? When you're playing as a wing back this day, a uh, winger that day on the right hand sides, etc, etc. Obviously, the player has to do his thing as well too, but when the guys are young, you're also hoping the club are going to try and you know, get the best out of the game as well too. And, you know, Hudson Adoy isn't the only young guy here to kind of stagnate over the seasons. Uh, but still though, you know, in hindsight, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of regret by not accepting that Bayern Munich move all those years back. And maybe if Hudson Adoy accepted that, this would be a completely different timeline. We're seeing how Musiala has adapted so well since signing for Bayern. You'd imagine that would have been something quite similar for Hudson Adoy as well too. You know, sometimes these injuries in football can really just affect the potential of uh, what a player has. You know, I'd like to think that Hudson Odoi somehow can still find a way back to reclaim himself and get that confidence back. But um, I'm really not too sure what it is at this point in time. Hence, why well, I'm going to pose this question to you guys. Do you think Hudson Odoi can come back or do you think right now? I mean, that's probably it for his Chelsea future, right? Let us know below. And to end things, we have an update on Victor Roque. Now that Roque's turned 18 years old, expect to see this guy's name in reports even more over the next few months because now legally he can sign for clubs in Europe. And as the player himself has said, you know, he is ready now to make that step up and make that move to a European club. Right now, Barca, us, Real Madrid and Paris Saint-Germain are all actively looking to sign him. But I'd probably say Barca are the leading candidates at this point in time. And I mean, that's for multiple reasons. But the main one is, is that there's a lot of like, Vast Brazil connections, guys like Deco, who's acting as an advisory behind the deal. Uh, other guys uh, in official positions as well too that have that connection between, you know, Brazilian talents and Barcelona. The thing affecting Barcelona though is that they're now hindered by FFP. So they have to sell players to try and raise the money now to strike a move to bring them to Barcelona. So it, they're not the guaranteed favourites to get him. But of course, they do have connections and they have been talking to him for a long time as well too. But regardless... Reports today from Brazil have said that we are still in the running. We know from previous reports that we've been holding active talks with his parents and his camp as well too. And the news is, Atletico Paranej are ready to sell him in the summer window. He does have a 100 million release clause, but they won't be selling him for anywhere near close to that, with reports suggesting that they want around 60 million euros to release him in the summer. So that gives us some hope. Now recently, him and his boy Andre Santos starred for the Brazilian under-20 team, the Sudamericana. And yeah, I mean, he had a great tournament and he scored a lot of goals. And right now, both him and Santos have been caught up by the official Brazil squad as well too. So these are two massive team talents in South America. And a part of me is hoping that you know Andre Santos can get on the phone to his boy and try to persuade him to link up with him in London because if I was to say one thing about this guy is that he gives me very strong like Carlos Tevez, uh, Canegrero vibes. When I was younger, there were so many reports back in the day linking us with Tevez from Boca Juniors. And at the time, we were like set to sign him until that move collapsed. It was pretty similar to for Canegrero. Now, I used to love Aguero at Atletico Madrid. Like, 
You know, I first liked Atletico Madrid because of Fernando Torres when I was a kid. Yeah, so this is like a long, long time ago. It's like, basically, I've always wanted to see this profile of striker at my club. You know, like the stocky, short guys with low center of gravity that can create goals from nowhere, that have like exceptional skill, pace, exciting to watch, play with passion. I want to see a forward like this. And I know I've said that, okay, I, I, I want to see a guy that can bring guys into the game. But with this particular profile of striker, these guys for me are like systemless players. That's what makes them more exciting. Now this season he has around eight goals and three assists in like 38 games, but you know, he has been playing since he was 17. So for a 17 year old to have that type of goal return, that is not bad. You know, he's improved even more now and he'll be ready to take things to the next level when he moves to a European club. So I'm hoping that we can do business to try and sign him, even if it means signing two strikers, because as I'm saying, we're going to have to make some big changes to how we use our attack for next season. A part of me feels like Fafana is set to get a long move, for sure. Armando Brea could be sold. I'm not too sure what his future is saying at this point in time. He got the injury at the absolute wrong time. Still though, he is available in the summer window. And we haven't stopped holding discussions to try and sign him. So let's hope that Todd Barley, Barley and the team can make something happen here. Because I think this kid could be a very special talent for the next few years. So on that note, I'm going to wrap things up, keep things moving. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hit that like button. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.